News 1 at 9. And welcome back for a 19th consecutive month. Nevada casinos report another decline in revenue. In July, Nevada casinos made about 12.5% less than they did at the same time last year. Las Vegas Boulevard and uh, downtown were also down in July by about uh, 11%. The only area that did not drop, reported drop in revenue, North Las Vegas had posted a 7% gain thanks to Aliante Station, which was not open in July of last year. Well, the number of people visiting Las Vegas is also down in July. Visitor volume was down more than 1% from the previous year. That's the 14th straight drop. But the smallest drop so far this year, the good news is, number of conventions uh, actually rose a fraction of a percent. Every other monthly report this year has shown double-digit declines in conventions. The latest housing numbers show a slight drop in sales. A little more than 4,000 homes were sold in August. That's according to the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. It's down from about 4,600 in July. The median price of a single-family home in Southern Nevada also fell nearly 2.5% from July to $135,500. And don't look for an economic recovery anytime soon here in Southern Nevada. In fact, recovery here could significantly lag the rest of the country. That's the assessment of economic analyst John Restrepo, who is also a member of the state's economic forum. The forum is a panel of private experts who put together the revenue estimates that are used to build Nevada that is budget. I sat down with Restrepo earlier today. Let's talk about the economy. Obviously, that's why I have, uh, I have you here. Um, uh, you reported in your in your most recent uh, kind of snapshot of the economy that, right. that uh, d the decline of four indicators you follow has slowed a little bit. Correct. So what does that mean? I mean, are you seeing some sort of light at the end of some sort of tunnel, or? We just have four indicators that just happen to slow down. This That's time. the question, right? We, as I said, I think in one of, one of my statements in the new uh, in the uh, our monthly indicator uh, report, uh, one month does not make a trend. Right. So at least it's looking like it's going in the right direction for the month of July. We'll see what the August numbers are looking like. The national numbers seem to be consistently slowly getting better. So at some point they're going to start reflecting in the Southern Nevada numbers. But we we need a two or three, four yeah. more months before we can see a consistent decline before we can even say anything. And real quickly, what were the four indicators? That, that, uh, total total jobs, uh, jobs by industry. Uh, approved unemployment claim filings and uh, median house price. Those are the four we track. One of the things that, you, that you, you wrote that I thought was interesting, in July, Clark County's unemployment rate was just over 13%. Correct. And you're saying that anecdotally, it's actually probably much higher than that. Talk to me about that. Yeah, when you look at the other three, comp the other two components of unemployment, uh, which is discouraged workers and what they call forced part-time workers, those numbers are readily available at the national level. They're starting to come in at the state level. But if you use some of that, th those numbers, the ratios between those two, and then you also look at what you hear anecdotally and just talking to the folks at the various government agencies and things like that and clients that we talk to, you could probably add another six to seven points, possibly even eight points to that 13 percent to show true right. unemployment. So we're and that's looking, what's challenging for right, us. Right, and we're looking, so we'd be looking at like a 20 percent-ish kind of number that's correct. for people who are out of work, discouraged from work, just just not working. Right. And that's not even including, uh, for example, uh, folks that are independent contractors. Uh, real estate agents are a great example of that. Right. They're not called, including some of those numbers because they just don't, don't get recorded. But yeah, it, it's pretty high up there. So I, I think 20% is a, a reasonable number we could, unfortunately, say it's a good number. Um, do you think that, it, well, our, uh, we have one of the worst economies in the country, Correct. if not the worst, but right. we have one of the worst economies in the country in terms of unemployment, in terms of housing, that type of thing. Correct. Um, do you think that, uh, how, how long will our recovery leg a national recovery, do you think? I think this time around, uh, we're going to lag, and we're probably going to lag, in our opinion, based on the indicators we're seeing, the type of economy we have, some of the potential pending events. There's a couple of big ones out there that, that you've heard in the media. Uh, we're probably a year 
to a year and a half, maybe even two years behind the national recovery. And we're defining recovery at least six months of positive job growth. There's other indicators of a recovery, but for our purposes, kind of on the ground, something that folks can easily understand, it's at least six months of job growth. And the reason being, Jeff, is that we have an economy that's largely based on consumption and discretionary spending. And those are the areas that have been hardest hit by this recession. So that, that makes it more, more challenging for us, let's say, than an economy, let's say, like Phoenix, for example. And that Some national, that. or the consumer on a national basis, I mean, you're seeing some reporting that what this recession is doing is fundamentally changing spending patterns. Correct. Consumers are becoming, just across the board, much right. more conservative. I mean, do you think that this, are we looking at a long-term shift, do you think? Do you think that the consumer, especially the people who would come to Las Vegas, you know, are they being fundamentally changed?